Hi there guys, Jojo Pet here with G2PO.com and today we are doing a review for Funky Barn on the Wii U. Uh, this is a Wii U exclusive. Uh, basically it's a port of the Funky Barn from 3DS if you ever played that. The graphics are very slick in 1080p. They're very cartoony, but they're still very good. Now the music sounds a lot like the soundtrack from Animal Crossing. Now, Funky Barn is a farm sim, a lot like Farmville, also at the same time a strategy slash puzzler. Basically it's you running a farm and you're starting with very little to start with, but uh, you level up over time. Each level you get new animals, you get new plants and trees and decorations, you get trophies, and you get all sorts of things to put on your farm. One thing I really like about this is that it sets itself apart from most of those other games because it gives you a way to gather resources. So there's actually machines that you can buy for each specific type of resource. Say for gathering eggs, there's a special robot for gathering eggs and you have to build a road for him. So this machine will just basically patrol around anywhere where your eggs get dropped and suck them in and go over and he'll spit them back out and sell them for you. Now unfortunately there's only two upgrades for everything. So say if you get a cow barn, well, you can upgrade the cow barn for capacity and things like this, but you can only do it twice. So if you need more space, then you would need to build another cow barn. Now something different in this game is they have seasons. So there's a winter, there's a fall, there's a spring and a summer. And each one has like a timer. And with each season comes, you know, the different weather. Also the animals react to this. So say if it's winter time, then you're going to get more milk out of the cows than in spring or summer or fall. Also with the weather system, they built in tornadoes and lightning storms, both of which will destroy your farms and you'll have to spend a lot of money to repair your farms. So to guard against these vandalizing weathers, you can build a weather station. Also, you'll find UFOs trying to abduct your cows, so you can build a defense base to guard against that. As far as controls, they're real basic. They're pick up and drag and interact, press A to confirm, B to cancel that sort of basic control. Now I love the controls for the gamepad because you can go in and say this pig right here, you can just tap on him, you can customize the colors, you can choose from one of three colors, you can change the name of your animal, and also you can interact with the animal. So if you want to you can just poke the animal and it'll put him in a bad mood, or if you want to you can gently stroke the animal, pet him, and they'll dance around and the happiness meter will go up. When the happiness meter reaches full, what usually will happen is whatever animal will output what product they give. And if you see on the screen there, it's glowing yellow. You need to pick that up and I'm just going to use the ZR button right here and drag it up and drop it right in here and it's sold. Alright, so here are the major downsides of this game. First of all, and most important to me, this is only a single player game. With games like this, people like to interact with other farms and other people, friends, and show off their farm and stuff like that. And unfortunately, that's not something that's in this game. Also, one thing that really got at me was the fences would not always connect like to the wall or the rocks. And it was really a chore to get to actually build the fence in because if there's even the smallest hole, then the animals will get out and the animals are scared of each other. This game is rated E for everyone, but I wouldn't recommend it for anyone under seven years old because it is quite challenging. There's a lot of multitasking involved. I, I imagine if a younger kid were playing it, they wouldn't know the difference. But there's constantly a lot of multitasking going on in this game. You'll have to refill the food, you'll have to refill the water, you'll have to go over and save different animals from falling into water. And you'll, there's lots of different things that are going on in this game all at one time. And unfortunately, another thing that is not in this game is the game doesn't go on when you're not playing it. There's two game modes in this game. There's story mode, and then there's challenge mode. Now story mode, it only goes through seven levels of farms. And once your farm graduates to the seventh level, then you'll have nowhere to go. There's nowhere to grow. There's no more animals, there's no more plants, there's really nothing to look forward to except maxing out your farm. And unfortunately, you can't expand your farm, so you can just build on what land is there. Now, challenge mode, there is easy, medium, and hard. There's scores for each, so you can go back and beat those over and over again, try to beat your own score, but it's still very limited. Each challenge mode level will take you at the most 20 minutes. Now, overall, I'm going to have to give this 3 out of 5 stars. It was a very good game, but unfortunately having no multiplayer and the game being very short as far as like you can't build out and expand, 
I'm going to have to take off a lot for that. It was a good design for a game, but it fell short with the multiplayer and also replay value is not there. But thanks for watching, you guys. Y'all have a good day, and I will talk to you later. Skizzle!